Thank you for joining us for Coffee with Hillary and Les, brought to you by the State of Mind Hypnosis and Training Center, located in the heart of the Kawartha Lakes. This is our almost daily community podcast about the mind and how we all might change it in the most simple and helpful ways. Every day we sit, staring at the lake and sipping our coffee, chatting about hypnosis and how to make those meaningful adjustments to our state of mind. Because nothing's more important than your state of mind. Okay, we're on the line. Summer day, windy summer, sunny day. Weather moves really fast now. It's like one minute it's calm and sunny and warm and the next it's windy and rainy and then the next it's overcast and dark (laughs) and then the next the sun's breaking through and it's just quiet and still constantly moving constantly changing the harder i try to prepare for it (laughs) the more it bothers me (laughs) (laughs) Always anticipating the future. Always wondering about the past, complaining about the rain on the weekend. When really, in this moment right now, it is just beautiful outside. Yeah, it really is. The the smell's nice, the wind is gentle on my face. (laughs) The sun is warm, coming down. Yeah, it's really kind of nice. I don't know what it'll be in 20 minutes, but (laughs) I do know that it's nice right now. How's that for a segue? That was great. A segue? Can you guess what we're talking about? (laughs) Not the weather. (laughs) No. No, the weather's just a good vehicle to talk about things. Yeah, I want to do... I want to talk about past, present, and future. I want us to do three more podcasts on time. Mm -hmm. I find it to be the singular most important thing when working with clients is trying to get them centered back into the present moment. Yeah. Yeah. The past and the future are, are like problems to people, right? You don't, they, 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 deal with the past in terms of resentment or anger or um, guilt, shame. Uh, The past is fixated on. Um, It's thought about a lot, things that have happened. You know, there's, there's so much to life and so much going on and then everything goes on and it's done. It, it's, it did it, it's, it's happened. Yeah. And yet um, we reach backwards and cling to it. Even, even the good times, right? Mm-hmm. The good old days, the, the, the glory days, as Bruce Springsteen says, you know, the, the things I used to be, the things I used to have accomplished, you know? I remember when I had black hair, you know? <laughs> And I weighed 30 pounds less and, you know, people cling to, to things that are so long ago, you know, like high school days or, or things like that. And it's just such a problem the way people embrace the past and drag it into their present. And it's such a predictor of the future. People use the past to be afraid of their future to be um, sometimes just really committed to their future, um, which isn't necessarily bad. But, you know, we all talk about, you know, Harry Chapin, you know, uh, cats in the cradle. When you coming home, dad, I don't know when, but we'll get together then, you know. We're so busy creating the future and being focused on the future that we lose track of the present and the present comes and goes. And we spend our present moment, you know, doing things that were, are targeted towards a, a better future. We think we'll make our future better without taking into account really 
um, the way we're spending our time. Mm -hmm. right? I think too we reach back for not, you don't often see people reach back to like dwell in a happy time. <laughs> you know, I, we, we often, we reach back um, to things that are, are perceived as maybe negative or scary or regretful or, you know, we're always doing mm -hmm. that stuff instead of thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll sit and think about that happy time, mm -hmm. right? We, we, the happy time comes and, and it, and it seems to just blow past us. Mm -hmm. Um, but if something bad happens, we end up, uh, dwelling in it sometimes and i think that's you know the main reason why clients come to see us is because that has gotten out of hand mm -hmm. and when we have had you know those moments where we look back at the past with love and, and appreciation we spend our present time trying to recreate it rather than mm -hmm. create something new and exciting yeah i i just think that more and more the, the more I examine my own life and the more that um, I spend time with clients, this idea of past, present, and future are, are so difficult. Um, there's, there's such an obsession about them. And yeah, I just would like to deconstruct them a little bit, you know, to, to take them down to pieces and see what it is we're doing in our mind that's not helpful. That our perceptions of the past, our perceptions of the future, you know, there's the old saying, you know, past is regret, future is fear, you know. Past is resentments, and future is that incredible, um, elusive uh, goal that we never seem to be able to achieve. Um, you know, and, and I guess to me, you know, the first thought is they're all myth, you know, they're all myth to consider what the past is practically, um, and its dimensions, I think is really valuable. So I, I, I think let's talk about the past <laughs> and the past as myth, as this thing that we create to try to teach ourselves but we often lose the, the moral of the story, um, which would simply be to, to be present, be here, mm -hmm. be now, be in this moment, because this is the only moment you've got, and this is the moment that you're acting in. And if you're, you're gonna do, or you're gonna think, or you're gonna say something, it's gonna happen now. And yes, the things we might do now are going to put us in a direction for the future, but there's a whole lot more, to, you know, factors that determine the future than the ones that we control. Mm -hmm. And so to be obsessed in controlling that, I think is um, illusory at best. Yeah. So past as myth, you know, what are your thoughts? Thoughts. What are thoughts? <laughs> mm. um, I think, in terms of seeing it as a myth, is is uh, it's a it's a new concept to me just now that you know you're bringing up, and I think it's interesting because. we all have events from our past that sometimes aren't even the way we remember them, mm -hmm. right? So we can go back to them. I've had clients go back in hypnosis and go, oh, that actually didn't happen like that. Like that. Um, it's not always exact, right? We're not, we're not playing out exact situations in, in hypnosis, but Sometimes it's just a, a new concept that, oh, someone didn't actually mean that, or that didn't actually happen, or that wasn't actually mine, or mm -hmm. you know, all those things. So I think 
in terms of myth, I mean, yeah, it's already happened. It's in the past. It's never going to happen again, you, you know, probably, um, in that way, in that exact way. So <clears throat> I think it's good to look at it almost like a, you know, a painting on the wall or a, <laughs> mm -hmm. or what would you say, like something written in a book. It's, it's already happened. It's, it's, you know, um, it's not something to cling to, even though we do. Um, yeah, it, it is, it is a little mythical because it can also, uh, just as myths do, um, it, it tries to create the future. Hmm. Right? Oh, there's a myth of, let's just make up something, like a myth of somebody coming across the sea and, you know, oh, that, so we'll stick to that myth and we'll wait for the person to come across the sea, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll do everything in our power to not miss that or be aware of it or be scared of it, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that the past is so limited and so deceiving and so filled with interpretation. I mean, first of all, everything that happens, happens from an individual perspective, right? What you and I are experiencing right now is completely different because it's, we're sitting at the same table, we're talking about the same topic, mm -hmm. but we're interpreting everything our own way from our own perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, in hypnotism, we regress people to the past all the time because you know, a little kid's interpretation of events has got nothing to do with any any third person observable objective view of the circumstance, right? Um, you know, you're you are completely um, at the disposal of your five senses, mm -hmm. and you know, just to think about how the world looks when you're. When you're two and a half feet tall and you weigh maybe 30 pounds and you have absolutely no control over anything that's going on other than maybe your own being able to walk around inside the house or, or see what's happening and you're observing things um, from that perspective um, that limited amount of knowledge that limited amount of life experience that tendency to be in fear mm. because everything is new um, that that perspective is just so untrustworthy you know and it's it's seldom even close to what anybody might call reality it's why I say that there's no such thing as reality there's only experience we are we are stuck with our five senses moving around a giant planet um, exposing our our mind to a multitude of of things and stimuli um, and what we collect from our five senses is what we call our past and then we interpret it and that's i think so important is it's always being interpreted and it's almost always being interpreted out of fear um, how does this affect me what will happen to me mm -hmm. Um, what should I be uh, afraid of? How much fear should I give this? Um, and then the meaning goes even further because then it's meaning about us. Am I worthy? Am I deserving? Am I allowed? Am I good? Am I bad? Am I being good or am I being bad? So the past becomes this misperceived set of experiences that we use mostly to judge our, ourselves or judge others or more importantly just build a body of fear and confusion um, sometimes determination and anger and resentment but the thing that we tend to remember i mean that's the tool we use in hypnosis right we use emotion right i can't say let's go back to a time where this happened but i can say 
Like really easily. I'm going to count backwards from five, and when I get to one, you're going to be at the place where this emotion began, this feeling that you have began. And I'll count backwards, and I'll hit one, and they'll just be there. And, the, you know, it'll be some, some event that they don't even actively remember, that they haven't thought about in a long time. Um, you know, that's just repression. That they haven't considered, that they weren't even aware was there. Um, and, and then it pops forward. And then we reinterpret that past from the perspective of an adult. That's all, often just all it takes is just re-examine that event from the perspective, a new perspective, not any more accurate, really, but probably a perspective with a lot less fear, mm -hmm. a perspective with a lot more confidence, a perspective that, you know, in many respects proves to the little one that's going through that, that experience that they survived it, and they survived it quite well, mm -hmm. right? And it changes everything in the mind. Um, that precipitated from that, that changes every event following it that created that same emotion. So, you know, it's, it's, it's that idea that the past itself is such a limited, unreliable idea that that's where I call it a myth. Mm -hmm. I call it a myth and the unfortunate thing is it often serves as the foundation for our future beliefs. Yeah. It, found, it forms the foundation for the way we approach similar events or more importantly, similar emotional events. Yeah. The past is a myth. <laughs> and the best we have is our experience and our experiences we talk about all the time and we teach this because we think it's um, just a really useful tool to understand it. You know, uh, you know as, as what's his name? George Ball, the statistician, said all models are wrong, some are useful. You know, we like to think this is a model that is useful, that's helpful. If we take what we call experience and we accept that there's no such thing as an abstracted, verifiable reality, but that what we call reality is sort of the uh, aggregate of everybody's experience. Um, and we all share it together and we say, these are all the experiences and therefore this is what happened. If what all we have is experience, then experience comes from events that happen that we place a meaning on. And that meaning is often very personal. It's often about who I am, what I am, my worth, my, my abilities, my, my qualities as a being. And then that creates an emotion in us. And, and the spectrum of emotions is, you know, from, from highest elation to the lowest depression and, and feeling that we are either um, champions and, and incredible or that we are unworthy and incapable and everything in between. And those are the emotions that we put on. And when those emotions come in contact with the body, we call them feelings because that's where we feel it. And everybody feels emotions differently. It's just our own habits. We feel them in different places in our body. We feel them at, at, at different intensities. Um, we feel them uh, sometimes as very, very little and sometimes as, as incapacitating. Um, but when we break them down into those pieces and then we look back and see the past as a myth, then we're really in a position to say, um, I can release the past. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think too, it brings me to um, uh, somebody I was working with recently. I mean, everybody, it seems, goes through this, but this was very apparent. Um, is someone I was working with was had a fear of... Um, uh, frogs and had it was debilitating right um, couldn't go on trips stuff like that couldn't even like be around her own house without freaking out anyway through regression um, 
we came to a time where her mom had just said a few words and she took it on, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's really, um, like you said, it's about going back and reinterpreting it as an adult. Adult. <laughs> adult. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, just looking at it differently, applying new knowledge to it, um, doing some inner child work. And, I mean, it can be that, that simple. And, uh, you know, the client was like, holy moly, I had no idea that <laughs> that's where that came from. Um, but, you know, moving forward is going to be different for her. Mm -hmm. And I think if we looked at everything like that, if we're scared of something, if we're, if we're, you know, um, anxious about something, if we're angry about something, if we're fearful or, you know, <laughs> if we're hurt about something, um, just taking a moment and not getting dragged into it, but looking at it and going, okay, you know, I wasn't born with this anxiety, let's say, where did it come from? Probably somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're so subject to other people's interprets, interpretations of events, especially when we're little. Mm -hmm. And we have such deep, complete trust in people. You know, most people have this deep, complete trust in, in their mother, um, in their parents, in somebody who's been empowered to care for them and has been doing that, taking care of them. And, and when somebody keeps bringing you a meal and somebody keeps changing your clothes and tucking you in at night and telling you a story, um, you, you just, they become the source of all understanding. They become the source of everything. Yeah. And you know, the, the, like you point out, the most important thing you can do with the past, right? The word mistake, I'm just sitting here thinking about the word mistake. I took that wrong, right? I interpreted mm -hmm. that incorrectly. Mm -hmm. um, mistakes, uh, we condemn ourselves for, you know, mistakes in the past. I still have moments where I'll think about some things I've done in the past, just dumb, dumb things, and I just shiver. I just, like, how could I have done that? And then I remember, because you know now I'm a hypnotist and I've been working on this now for a couple of decades, <laughs> um, you know that the past is only valuable for the lessons that we take from it. Yeah. Right? It's, in many respects, just forget it. Just let it go. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. It's absolutely gone. Cannot be changed. Never can be changed. The only thing that can change is your interpretation of it. And if your interpretation of it is, oh, I made a mistake and there's a lesson to be learned from that, mm -hmm. then the past might have a little bit of value. But as soon as you learn the lesson, it's like, well, I've learned the lesson. I don't need that past anymore. It's not valuable to me. Um, you know, I think that we, we put too much weight and severity on mistakes, right? I, I always use this reframe with my clients. We never learn anything by doing something right. When we do things right, we don't really learn much because it's obvious we, we already know. Mm -hmm. We already understand. We're already capable in that regard. So when we're doing things and they go well, we don't remember them, right? Simple things in life, like what you wore four days ago as for clothes. It went well. You didn't dress. You didn't have your tags out. You didn't have your zipper down. You didn't wear clashing colors. It must have worked out. And so you don't even remember. We, we, what we remember, or what comes to us, are the, are the things that we did that we didn't get mm -hmm. right, that we didn't get it the way we wanted. Yeah. Um, and that's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we develop. 
We learn much more from our mistakes than we'll ever learn from the things we do right. And so really the best thing you can do for yourself is make as many mistakes as possible. Because mm -hmm. with every mistake you make, you learn more. Now, I think I've done my share, but um, I, I, it changes the way I look at it. It changes the way I look at myself, right? When I look around the world and I acknowledge that there's, there's no human being walking around that hasn't made mistakes. Yep. And every human being is learning from their mistakes. And I'm just one of them. I'm just another human being learning from my mistakes then the past is nothing but a book filled with lessons. And if I took the lesson and I'm using it now well in my life, then the past is not valuable to me anymore. And so how do I get rid of the past? How do I not judge the past? Well, I forgive it. Forgiving is everything. Mm -hmm. How do you teach people to forgive? Um, well, first I ask them if they're willing, um, and usually they are. Once they've done the groundwork, which is looking at the past in a different way, it's easier to forgive. I also have them uh, look at, let's say, the, the offender. <laughs> Right, in hypnosis we call, where, you know, there's a term, the offender, which is just the person in the situation that did you wrong kind of thing that you're now hopefully about to forgive. But we look at the offender and sometimes I go as far as having them imagine the offender as a child. Mm -hmm. Right, because the person offending in that moment is... Uh, back back when is uh, scared angry usually hurt child mm -hmm. right so seeing them for what they are and where they came from um, is it, we're not about you know letting them off the hook <laughs> for whatever they did um, but it's about looking at it differently mm. and in looking at the person differently um, it can it can change in a s instant in an instant how you feel about the person and make forgiveness a lot easier and I always get them to forgive them in their own way because um, everybody's different with their forgiveness um, <clears throat> so yeah that's how I that's how I do that mm. I always use the refrain, forgiveness is freedom. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, you're not forgiving them for them, for their benefit. Yeah. Right? And I really encourage them not to let them know. <laughs> Don't yeah. tell somebody <laughs> yeah. you forgave them. I forgave you. You know, that, that's just a great way to start a fight. Yeah. I just want to let you know I forgave you. <laughs> In your noses. <laughs> for that thing that you did. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not... <laughs> It's not advisable to go around telling people, I forgive you. <laughs> that forgiveness is really never about the other person. Mm. Um, in as much as you forgive the other person and tap into some form of you know, universal love that says, you know, we all make mistakes, you made a mistake, um, that's, that's a pleasant gift. Um, that they don't ever need to know you did. But in as much as forgiveness is really about you being done with the past, mm -hmm. right? Forgiveness is about saying, I learned the lesson here. I've learned about trust. I've learned about love. I've learned about these kinds of situations. Here I am today. I survived. Here I am. I'm smarter now. Mm -hmm. I've learned. I've survived this situation that happened that maybe, you know, I see myself in some ways as having made a mistake and I see them as having made an enormous mistake and really hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, I've benefited from that situation in that I'm smarter now. I'm capable now. I can see that kind of situation coming now. I'm able to avoid that kind of situation now. I'm able to avoid that kind of person now. 
I'm able to protect myself from anything that might hurt me like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm strong. But what's not serving me anymore is thinking about it. Yeah. Thinking about what happened, letting emotions of anger or resentment dominate my, my emotional state, letting fear and hurt dominate my emotional state. That's not helping me. Mm -hmm. I know I'm smarter. I know I'm capable. I know this will never happen again. And so I'm ready to let go of it. I want to just let go of it. I don't want it acting in my life, in my choices, in the way I live today. I don't want it being active. Mm -hmm. And that that's the value of forgiveness. Yeah. The value of forgiveness is that I'm free today. I'm free to make whatever choice I want without referring to the past without referring to my past mistakes, without referring to other people's past mistakes, without referring to the past that might have hurt me. I know I can take care of myself. I know that I'm capable and I want rid of this past. I don't want it being part of my life anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the value of forgiveness. And nobody has to know. Um, you don't go telling people. But what you do is you, you empower yourself that way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think also it, it then, <clears throat> usually what you see in clients is uh, there's a forgiveness of others. And as we're moving forward to the present moment, there's sort of like a, a wall there. <laughs> and next is always forgiveness of self, right? Because usually at that point, they're going, well, wait a minute. I hurt others, too, when I was younger, or along the lines. And so then there's a forgiveness of uh, forgiving yourself, right? That's important to, to do. And that's part of the past as well, because there's a past you that's suffering over something that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember... Um, it's an old, old phrase that a hypnotist who is one of our teachers um, uses a lot. And thank you, Cal, for, for this phrase. If I had known then what I know now, right? Oldest phrase in the books. If I had known then what I know now, um, would that have happened? Right? Would I have made that choice? Would I have done that hurtful thing? That mm -hmm. that foolish thing mm -hmm. that selfish thing if I'd known then what I know now and I think that it's that phrase puts it in the past and reminds us that the past is gone and there's nothing we can do about it we can be different today we can make different choices today mm -hmm. but the past is just gone and the thing of it is is it is gone I mean it's nowhere to be found except in your memory and your memory is this really horrible um, storyteller <laughs> because it focuses only on usually um, sort of negative judgments against yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, memory is confabulation. It's this really well-established um, concept in memory studies that we fill in the gaps is what we do. We, we have the little bits of the story that we actually experienced and then we fill in the gaps with confabulation and the confabulation is seldom accurate mm -hmm. but always consistent with the meaning we've placed on it mm -hmm. if we've if we've interpreted the event and put meaning on it then how we confabulate the parts that we don't remember are very consistent with that meaning and often just inaccurate, just incorrect, not even mm -hmm. close to what really was going on. Mm -hmm. But it's just the way the memory works. So the memory, you know, if you read memory studies, memory is as much a, 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 a creator of story as it is <laughs> um, remembering facts. Yeah. Yeah, the past, it's gone. There's only two things to do with it. Learn from it and forget it. Yeah. And when you do those things, it's amazing how free you feel mm -hmm. to make choices now, which is the only 
real moment. It's the only truly uh, part of time that is under your control. Yeah, that's true. It's where we actually live. Right? So where we're, where we're thinking about our past, we're living in our head. <laughs> if we're thinking about our future, we're living in our head. When we're engaged in the present, we are a mind inside a body capable of saying, thinking, or doing an infinite number of things. And what we say, think, or do is then a choice. And so that's why I say, life is not lived minute by minute. Life is lived choice by choice. Unfortunately, we let the past and our habits control our choices. And we let our fears and concerns about the future control our choices. When our choice can only ever be exercised here and now. It's easy to say. It's hard to do. Yeah. We all struggle with it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let that, let that be your reframe today. The past is a myth. A myth that I tell myself. With mythical beasts. To, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's, that's the way sometimes it becomes. These others who have become so much more than they ever were <laughs> in our minds. <laughs> <laughs> Past is a myth. Hope that helps. Yeah, it's helping me. It's making me think. I'm just off thinking now. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> we'll see you later. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast and that maybe it helped even a little. If you have any questions, we would love you to send them along in an email to info at psalmhypnosis.com. Thank you for being part of the State of Mind community. For more information about hypnosis and the various online or in-person services we provide, please visit our website, www.psalmhypnosis.com. The link will be in the notes below. While you are there, why don't you book a free one-hour journey meeting with Hillary or Les to learn more about what hypnosis is and how you might use it to make your life what you want it to be. Bye for now. Talk to you tomorrow.